let's continue from where we left off. Okay. Yeah. So you said in reality, you're yeah, talking we, about the city we were talking about the value, ex, yeah, the, the exchange rate, rate which yeah. holds the value mm -hmm. of the nation. Uh, because when we fall down the hip and then we redominate, we denominated or revalued our currency, whereby we drop off the four zeros. Mm -hmm. Now the Ghana CD one CD to almost one dollar, mm -hmm. or one CD, one CD to two seventy five uh, pounds. Okay. But today, current rates, one CD is now five point seven six dollars, right? One CD is equal to pounds for oh sorry sorry let's go over this again for every dollar you're going to get five cd the new cd five cd 76 which is not bad is it oh, no 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 it's not good because at the time when kofo done the re-denomination mm -hmm. it was almost one cd to one dollar oh okay so for every cd uh, in those days maybe if you had a dollar you get maybe one CD, uh, you use one CD 20 to get a dollar. Or maybe you need 275 CD, two CD 75 for a pound. Okay. But now you need seven CD 56 to get one pound. And you need five. So the CD has depreciated. Correct. It has devalued. Uh -huh. It has gone down. It's going down. Mm -hmm. It's going down. It's going down. Yeah. And the reason why that is not good for your economy, mm -hmm. right? So it means that our productivity is low and our money supply is high. Yes, it could be. Mm -hmm. It could be. It could be. As you said, it could be the fact that a particular government is coming to power and printing, printing money mm -hmm. without backing it with productivity. Okay, hold on for a minute. <laughs> Have you forgotten that they've printed new 200 notes? new 100 notes and new 50 notes so maybe that might be Great. the problem so, as well what uh, frame what frasi can what frasi can what say in a value would you say say if as a war you have um mm -hmm. uh, 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 coca-cola or yeah. something fanta mm -hmm. and you put water in it yeah. the taste is not the same it's diluted correct yeah so that is what happens mm -hmm. and that is why your currency is dropping because you probably you've printed money or you've created credits mm -hmm. without matching it with productivity. It is too much money chasing fewer goods and then it creates inflationary uh, systems. And then the inflationary, by creating that inflationary tendency, you it, it will devalue your currency so that you, you know your, your the parity it goes down. But to, to make it even more clearer in today's terms, right? Mm -hmm. So you're looking at your GDP your gross domestic product mm -hmm. which is the total productivity you value it in currency mm -hmm. so for example as we were talking about the banks they um uh they're using 21.6 billion mm -hmm. new ghana city to bail the banks which is about 3.6 3.7 billion dollars to bail banks mm -hmm. private banks no this is yeah. The private banks that may even have political affiliations mm -hmm. you don't use the national income to build them but unfortunately you have to because if the Ghana if Mr. Uh, Dr. Ms. Addison Governor Bank of if he didn't do that then that means that there would have been a collapse mm -hmm. but at the same time as I said Bank of Ghana is also to be blamed in terms of not being regulatory wise not being able to but you know that recently most of the banks collapsed uh -huh. they went into liquidity isn't it so, and so they've they, taken they over. consolidated a few ah, ones but they're, they're, using, they're using 5.6 percent of ghana's gdp to cover this type of thing mm -hmm. but the gdp also also was talking about is the total productivity yeah. currently it's about 375 billion mm -hmm. that is the total what we produce mm -hmm. divided by the number of people the population the of ghana, then that gives you the per capita mm -hmm. average yeah. right mm -hmm. currently Ghana is on about something like if you go for cities new Ghana city on average so 375 billion mm -hmm. cities divided by 31 million people, people. Mm -hmm. will give you your per capita so per capita is how much so per capita you're looking at about 12,100 uh, new Ghana city right 12,100 Yes, so on average, mm -hmm. 
each person, each Ghanaian. But it doesn't reflect into of the course ordinary, it of course it wouldn't ordinary reflect. Ghanaian. Yeah. Ah, but it's a it's an indicator that is so. Unique. Which means all this data is really not helping the <laughs> ordinary Ghanaian. You know. Yes, and that is why a good leader. You know, they come up with the, all these statistics, nice and all that. Uh -huh. Oh, Ghana is booming. The economy is all right. We are top up here. We are this. We are that. But yes. it's not reflecting on. Uh, in the lives of the ordinary Ghanaian. Correct, correct. And this, that, is, that this is, is why sometimes mm -hmm. in the administration of Chairman Rollins mm -hmm. that he was able to capture the majority, the grassroots, because he, he is a leader that cares about how people are even going to eat. He has that passion. So that I credit, you give credit to where it's due. Are you with me? Yeah. It's not all sort of you know, all very political, big time, big shorts, mm -hmm. and they had the guy on the ground not seeing anything. Mm -hmm. You see, mm -hmm. so the GDP is an indicator per capita. Mm -hmm. You, it's an indicator. So the GDP per capita is affected by maybe two or three variables. So number one, your total productivity. So if you're producing more, you are becoming better mm -hmm. on the global scene. You are comparing yourself. Another, Let's say you're yes. playing table tennis, and you are now you are practicing more so now when we are playing you beat me like uh, uh 10-0 you know how to play draft the draft i play draft really yeah, yeah, yeah. that, that, that we can have some time that's right you know you, you, you do that. <laughs> so if if you you enhance and uh -huh. you then it makes you better mm -hmm. it gives more value to you mm -hmm. and in the same way in an economy when we're producing more we are using our natural resources to create usable commodities mm -hmm. we are getting ourselves to that level where we are improving our value okay and we have to contain our money supply we have to be in charge not some other country printing our money we have to be in charge of our money and then they then we are working with the other countries to see compare the value so oh, if it's an inter international bo body that's printing for all mm -hmm. then we come into a union and we are also participating in that union yeah. and but then when we are producing and developing the body that is obviously doing the um, weighing will know that Ghana is weighing better. So it means we have to do Ghana comparative is, analysis. Uh, yeah, correct. About our productivity. Correct. Then yes. your next thing is your population, which is also uh, an indicator that can uh, uh, affect your per capita. Because to get your cap per capita is the total production mm -hmm. divided by the population. So when your population is also growing, but then your productivity is not growing that much. Your okay, your per capita will go down. Go down. Mm -hmm. You see. So we need to once again maybe be a little bit clever in terms of how we are also growing. So the whole thing is about productivity. Yes. If yes. you don't manufacture shit, if you don't if you don't do anything, then it means your, your value, value is value going, it's going your, to drop. Your your your. Your money money. is going to come down. So I'm going to give you a very mm. interesting analogy here. So, currently, the per capita income for Ghanaians, mm -hmm. New Ghana City, maximum 12,100, mm -hmm. right? But you want to compare it to the other <laughs> countries. So we will use the dollar based on the rates mm -hmm. as the indicator. So, for example, if we use the dollar as a rate, currently, a dollar CD dollar is 5.76 mm -hmm. to a dollar. Okay. Unlike when Kufo done the re-denomination or whatever it is, mm -hmm. taking out the zero, and then it was like one CD, one dollar. Now, let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. At that time, mm -hmm. if assuming that we were able to hold the currency without diluting That is what I wanted to hear. Uh, How assuming. long did that last, that one to one? How long did that last? Um, <laughs> did it last for the four years? Uh, probably at the end of the four years, it, it, it has started, started to give, shrinking. Yeah, it has started to give away a little bit. Maybe it was like maybe one dollar, uh, two, two, one, two CD to a dollar, something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there was the competition. Ghana is always uh, struggling a little bit against the outside world, you see. But as I was saying, assuming that it was still a one to one, that Ghana had been able to sustain its rates right then what it would have meant is that now gdp per capita would have been twelve thousand being twelve thousand one hundred ghana city would have been equivalent to twelve thousand mm dollars -hmm. which means that ghana's gdp per capita is going up mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and therefore is becoming a much powerful economy. Much more stronger. But because we lost that momentum mm -hmm. in the exchange rate, mm -hmm. diluting the currency, mm -hmm. governments coming into power without that much plans and just thinking printing money mm -hmm. will help them finance projects or yeah. do or maybe over inflate the cost of projects when we're doing a, in ten when you're doing a project down small project you are building one small house then you add another zero mm -hmm. do you know how much you've multiplied so something that's like uh, say hundred uh, thousand cd you add another zero it's ten times yeah. more yeah you see, so you put in a va the value you, you're putting in, you're not putting in any value mm -hmm. because you have multiplied at the end of, the thing that you are building is only a, a thousand. You say it's ten thousand. When you do that, your value goes down. down. But if you tell the truth and deliver one for one, it's a thousand CD, we give thousand CD for this project. The currency mm -hmm. would have been tight. Mm -hmm. So 12 new Ghana, 12,100 new Ghana CD would have then converted into $12,000, which means that our per capita income mm -hmm. is growing. Yeah. But currently... Much stronger. Correct. Currently, because of our development, our per capita... Thank you for watching this series. Watch out for the next one. Please don't forget to share. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like. Thank you for watching. Welcome back. Um, yeah. Carry on with your per capita income. Uh, thank you. Thank you for having me. Once again, I was... Uh, uh, showing how the interest mm -hmm. rates if you don't hold your interest rates well mm -hmm. and you slide down the line over the years because of your lack of domestic productivity mm -hmm. and the fact that you are not developing mm -hmm. you are not converting your you don't have factories to convert your own natural resources into usable goods mm -hmm. that you can actually export to other African countries and even the world at large mm -hmm. then what you are going to have is that your, your interest rates against the major currencies you will be going down, which is what has happened okay. since before than this uh, revaluation or denomination. So, which means the CD keeps dropping. It keeps going down. So, and that means that now, no, because of the exchange rate, mm -hmm. even though our per capita income is 12,100 Ghana CD, in, re in real terms, it's equivalent to $2,326. Okay. Two thousand three hundred. Whilst, whilst, whereas, if we had retained our interest rates against mm -hmm. the dollar strong, mm -hmm. kept our economy strong, the twelve thousand one hundred could have converted into twelve thousand dollars, okay. which then shows that Ghana is Economy's doing strong. is strong, and that we have to aim to not allow our. We don't have to dilute our currency. But the problem is, how are we? How best? Are we going to sort of kickstart that production line? Because at the end of the day, we need more technical support. We need more um, technological support. We need more vocational support. Yes. And if we don't have that expertise or that experts mm -hmm. on the ground, mm -hmm. who has gone or who has been educated mm -hmm. to sort of execute them manufacturing yes. skills and strategies, yes. how? Is How our productivity going to go up? Because it seems that we are not trying to um, educate our generation, the current one and the next one, into vocations and uh, you know technologies and technical you know yes. abilities. Yes. So that is my problem because um, in history, Singapore have been developed now in terms of their manufacturing. Uh, yes. level yes. so how do you think we can we can develop that area because i don't know how it, it, it's all about, about revisiting you know uh, because this as i said in chroma laid down the bl blueprint setting up the tamamoto way which is high waste eh? mm -hmm. it shows you tamamoto way to transport things or move people around a lot quicker tema industrial area starting to process reprocess the raw materials in chroma set it power key Power is key. That helps people to work in factories in the night when other people are sleeping. It doubles up our productivity because if we don't have power, we will sleep when the sun goes down. We all sleep. When the sun comes up, we wake up. When we are waking, we say the sun is too hot. I'm not coming to work. I'm tired. It's too hot. I want to eat some fufu and sleep. You see? So, but when we 
create power we can double our output right and then that will then start to reflect and also to have the awareness and that is why we are talking is the awareness when we become aware and admit that this is what has caused us to fail then we are one step we are getting there because when we then we change our who we can be reflecting you know back in the day when we used to have our software dazi and so many things that captures the nation it's like a movie or something you use that to educate so that the people know that now our education is not that all the time so so it, it means that we, we, we it brings us back to the doing, education the doing of things it yes. brings us back to education that's right the doing of things. um how are have they restructured the educational um trends in ghana mm -hmm. at the moment you know it's it's just about we are in september october november we are very three months into um our election day mm -hmm. And so far, the MPP has promised one district, one factory. Mm -hmm. um, it's just quite recently that I saw some videos and pictures <laughs> yes, of, of some what projects. they've done to, so far. But evidently, we, 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 we don't know. Um, we, 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 we've just seen pictures and videos of what so far they've, they've done. But as you said, it's quite a short period of time, four to years, to, to do anything. So the tenure is a bit of a problem. But as you said, if there's continuity, any new government that comes will follow the, follow the plan. So at least we wouldn't be in this mess because any new government that comes in Ghana, they change everything. They kick aside all the X ones. The, the, the previous government, and, that is and right. then they do their different things. That is right. So we keep going down instead of going up. Yes, you can. You can basically. Well, the procedure should be to complete the process of the previous government and then add your own onto it, and that will show continuity and growth. So we need to. I um, think. I think that is a very major problem. That's the reason why it's corruption it's and all these embezzlement has been really in a spike yes because you yes. need to when people you see this bureau that i was recommending to investigate to prosecute and to recover mm -hmm. you know this has to be there and not just the people in power but friends and family mm -hmm. so i am trying not to mention names but let's say for example one president comes into power suddenly the brother is on the rich list, number two. Or maybe the ex-president and the brother, they are all on the rich list of Ghana. What does that tell you? Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Yeah. You, you come, because the, the Bureau can say, when you came to power, what, what did you have? When you were taken... So it means the vetting process has to be rigorous. Yes. Because when you are coming in, they need to check all that. Even your, your, your net worth, what you do... Correct. And, and the people, the assets you've and got. the people that are very close to you. So, for example, you, Eric, the moment you come into politics mm -hmm. and you are given a political position, mm -hmm. our bureau will be looking at you and looking at your immediate friends and family and what you have to. Correct. Start. So, as you are starting the work, mm -hmm. we because you the position you are taking is a sensitive, it's a national post you are taking. So, we need to look at you to say, so, okay, what does Eric bring into this office? Maybe Eric has got ten houses already. Mm -hmm. He's a businessman. He's doing business great. He knows how to make money. We need him to come in the team to help uh, Ghana to make more money. Mm -hmm. But 10, 4 years when Eric is gone, we go and check Eric has now got 100 houses. Or Eric's brother is suddenly got uh, 200 houses. Mm -hmm. But Eric doesn't have any money. I mean, Ghanaians, we are not fools. <laughs> yeah, you would be. We yeah. are not fools. We can read in between the lines. Mm -hmm. So if we see that Eric himself, he didn't amass anything, but suddenly his brother is rich, we can. Our investigation team can call him and say, my friend, your brother is uh, we want to find out where you got that where money. you got to account for it. Mm -hmm. And when these um, variations... But as you said, it, it, it's all the systems. If proper systems are in place, are structured, if, if you are have place, correct, and then it's written, there is not going to be yeah. any embezzlement. But correct. the systems are just not working. They are not working. Correct. But they are trying to put it in place as the MPP government is saying, we don't know how far it's going to, it's going to yes. work. 
and how um, efficient how effectual is going to be. It has to be an independent mm -hmm. body. It has to be a strong body. A, a, a people or officials needs to know that you are not going to get away with it. You are not. Neither is your brother or your sister. Because our city is devaluing, and then corruption is on the on the on the rise. So how do we even get to stabilize our city, mm -hmm. and then? Of course, look on the other side for mm -hmm. development. So, for, for example, the ordinary Ghanaian. So, let's have a, 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 a talk here uh, when we're talking figures. So, for example, we have failing banks. Mm -hmm. They've uh, basically created a dent of 21 billion mm -hmm. new Ghana city, right? Uh, government is using to help them recover. But then, the people that collapse the banks, uh, they are walking away. They have their assets, they have their they have not even had the courtesy to maybe one or two that have had the courtesy. And there's nobody to even investigate. Maybe one or two and have, bring them to there to, is to books. There are the, you know, Bank of Ghana definitely is carrying out an investigation. But the thing is that the process How long? Uh, the process is slow. So this is because where it's been need, about two, three years uh, down this is the where line, isn't you it? need um, a fast track. You need a special court to see because that's where the special prosecution was created. Yeah. What has it done so far? Correct. So this it needs I, I to be I don't effective. know. It, it's, it's like nothing uh -huh. is working. So in terms of figures, as I was saying, so out of this 21 billion mm -hmm. cities, the government is managed to recover about 2 billion mm -hmm. cities up, up until today. But then we've sold, we've sold 5% of our entire bauxite for $2 billion mm -hmm. to China. Then we are also looking to raise a loan of about $19 billion. But then we have other people who are sticking uh, $21 billion. We've only recovered $2 billion. Mm -hmm. So if, imagine that if we have been able to recover all these undue monies that have left the national coffers, bring or take the money from the people who cause the problems, mm -hmm. you see where that will bring money That will in. bring revenue to the country. Correct. And... Uh, so we need to get into details. Thank you for watching this series. Watch out for the next one. Please don't forget to share. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like. Thank you for watching.